Okay, we are live. This beautiful Friday morning, it's about 10 minutes after 9 a.m. Did I mention it's Friday? Friday? What's up with that? Beautiful day. Hey, it is June 8th, 2018. I say the date just to reference this when I say this. Alrighty, guys. Come right on. Let's look at another church hymn this morning. A song that um, I've heard most of my life in church. And trying to get a little studying done. And it's a difficult topic to try to fully understand. But the... The church hymn we're going to look at this morning for our devotion is How Beautiful Heaven Must Be. You guys, um, if you've been following me for a little bit, you've seen where um, I've been sharing pictures of sunrises um, as we drive to work, Dusty and I. Um, we work in two different places, but we're just about two minutes from each other in location so we ride together and at work to work and then we capture these beautiful sunrises and we share them on our Facebook page and and just some of the fantastic views that God gives us each morning and um, this morning is no different so after I finish with my live broadcast our devotion then I'll be posting pictures of our sunrise this morning and it's gorgeous which led me to think of, of the song, How Beautiful Heaven Must Be. If God is going to give us the beauty of what we witness here on earth, can you just, can you imagine, I can't, I can try, but can you just fathom in your, in your heart what heaven is going to be like? Um, we have a lot of um, verses, a lot of scripture that I want to share with you. Um, this morning I didn't write down all of it um, partly I guess is laziness I don't know but if you look in Revelation chapter 21 most of the chapter speaks of heaven the new heaven and new earth and 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 it speaks of all the things that's going to be in heaven and all the things that's not going to be there I say all but there's a great deal of information that we don't have you know we don't know everything that's going to be in heaven um, I quote I, I read this quote this morning as I was kind of doing the study and and preparing for this devotion but to to dis, to try to accurately describe heaven would be like asking an unborn child that's still in a mother's womb to describe what earth looks like or asking a, a person who was born blind to try to describe the beauty of this earth. It would be impossible. And to try to accurately describe what heaven is really going to be like, I would fail miserably. Again, we have um, bits and pieces in the Word of God that tells us and gives us an idea of what heaven's going to be like, what heaven's going to look like. But to fully understand and fully accurately describe everything that's heaven that's going to be in heaven we we would fail because there's a lot of things that John wrote in revelation and about heaven and then there's a lot of things that he saw that he wasn't allowed to reveal and you know but I do know without a shadow of a doubt I'm convinced 100% in my heart that heaven is a beautiful place and if we're faithful and trust in Jesus Christ we can make heaven our home and with saying that you know I was looking at this and thinking about heaven this morning and and thinking about the um, Bible and the way heaven is described and and I want you to know a lot of, there's some people out there thinks that heaven is some kind of figment of our imagination some thinks it's just a little spiritual realm that you know you you go to but it's not really um, 
that heaven is described as a parable instead of an actual place. I believe that heaven is a real place. I believe it's an accurate, uh, actual place that you're going to go to. Um, you can read, a, I jotted down a few scriptures. We won't read them all. Um, <clears throat> starting in St. John chapter 14, verse 2, heaven is, is described as a house. And you can read that scripture in, in John 14, 2. It says, in my Father's house are many mansions. And then you can go into Hebrews chapter 11, verse 10, and heaven is described as a city. And, and you can read where the scripture says that uh, looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. And then in, if you jump down a few more verses in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 16, it describes um, heaven as a country. And it says that they desire a better country that is heavenly. And then you go into Luke chapter 23, verses, 20, verses 42 and 43, and it describes heaven as a kingdom and paradise. And you can remember that verse when, when I tell you about the thief that was on the cross, and he made that prayer towards Christ, and it says, and the thief on the cross says, um, Remember me when I go in thy kingdom. And Jesus replied and says, Today thou shalt be, be, be with me in paradise. So heaven is a real place. It's an actual, literal place that I believe that we're going to go to when this life is over. Um, heaven is a place that, when you think about it, will give you hope. What other place can we think of when we lose our loved ones? And, and this is not going to be popular, but you know I'm a preacher and I'm supposed to say unpopular things as long as the truth. But here's the truth that's not very popular. But not everybody that leaves this world is going to go to heaven. They could, they could, but we've got to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. If we reject Christ, then we, we will miss out on heaven. Now there's scripture for that. The Bible teaches us that no man can come unto the Father but by me, Jesus said. But it seems like everybody can live any way they want and as sinful as they want and as evil and as wicked as they want. And then when they die, oh, they're going to heaven. Let me give you one even better than that. <clears throat> there are people that can be just as good and kind and um, nice and charitable that will miss out on heaven. True. True. There are people that's in this world that will give the shirt off your, their back for you. That they'll roll up their sleeves and work for you. They will do everything in the world for you. There's people that sits in the very church house that is faithful every service, put money in the offering, help out with work days, and, and to do everything under the sun that the church needs. But at the end of their life, they miss heaven because of one reason and one reason only. We must be born again. We must accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. And there are good people that are rejecting Jesus Christ. There are good moral people that, that has good moral lives, but they miss out on heaven. That's not my word. That's not the gospel according to Dave. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the word of God. We must be born again. We must accept Christ as our Savior. It's not our righteousness. Our righteousness, our goodness is filthy rags. But if we're going to make heaven our home, the only one way that we can get there is through Jesus Christ. So we must accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. Everything else is vain. All the works that you do, it's vain without Jesus being your Savior. But when you think of heaven and you think about people leaving this world that's saved or babies that leaves and children that leaves this world too soon... There's a hope, there's a blessed hope that fills my heart to know that we can meet again. And we can look in Titus chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. It says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. 
And then in 1 Peter chapter 1, we're looking at verses 3 through 5. It says, Blessed be the good, I'm sorry, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I like verse 4. It says, To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away. Now catch this word. Reserved in heaven for you. Aren't you glad that there is a reservation for us in heaven? If you've accepted Christ as your Savior and you follow Jesus Christ and keep His commandments, there is a reservation just for you. We can read again in John 14, and it says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not true, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, then I will return and come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. There's a reservation for God's people. There's a reservation for Christians up in heaven. And verse 5 says, Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Folks, I want you to know heaven is real, but so is hell. As much as heaven is real, as much blessings there is for us when we, when we get to heaven, there's so much more torment if you miss heaven and wake up in that devil's hell. But how beautiful heaven must be. Look at all the beauty that's in this earth, on this earth, that God created. And that's the other side of heaven. Can you imagine when you get inside the gates? Um, there's not a lot of information um, behind this song, How Beautiful Heaven Must Be. Um, Mrs. A.S. Bridgewater had written this song. He said it was perhaps around 1910, but the song was published in 1920. She married, um, met and married her husband, and they worked in a farm um, in Alabama. And she had written this song, and it was a very popular song even back then. And it seemed like afterwards they just kind of fade off um, the scene, it said. And there's not a lot of information left other than that. But these five or four verses that she had written just kind of goes right along with Revelation chapter 21. So you can read that again, as I said yesterday. Don't be lazy. Don't just watch this broadcast and say, okay, I got my devotion, but I gave you all the scriptures that I'm using today. Get in the Word of God and read it for yourself and let the Holy Spirit you know, deal with you and get your thoughts and, and give you new, um, um, fresh thoughts on, on, on our topic. So let's look at verse 1 of this song, How Beautiful Heaven Must Be. It says, We read of a place that's called heaven. It's made for the pure and the free. These truth in God's word he hath given. How beautiful heaven must be. Verse 2 says, In heaven no drooping or pining, no wishing for elsewhere to be. God's light is forever there shining. How beautiful heaven must be. Verse 3 says, Pure waters of life there are flowing, and all who would drink may be free. Rare jewels of splendor are glowing. How beautiful heaven must be. I hope you guys are getting a vision of this as we read these lyrics of this song. Last verse, verse 4 says, The angels are sweetly, or the angels so sweetly are singing. Up there by the beautiful sea. Sweet chords from their gold harps are ringing. How beautiful heaven must be. <clears throat> I tell you what, there's songs that um, describes heaven. But I always say this. It don't make no difference to me if, if heaven was full of streets of gold and beautiful mansions of gold. 
or if there is just a little old cabin in a dirt road, as long as Jesus Christ is there, as long as our Heavenly Father is there, then that's going to make it truly heaven. And the chorus of the song says, How beautiful heaven must be, Sweet home of the happy and free, Fair haven of rest for the weary, How beautiful heaven must be, <laughs> How beautiful heaven must be, Sweet home of the happy and free, Fair haven of rest for the weary, Oh, how beautiful heaven must be. <laughs> Amen. How beautiful heaven must be. Let me tell you something. I'm not going to take a preacher's word for it. I'm not going to take the songwriter's word for it. I'm not even going to just take the writers of the Word of God's word for it. But I want to get there and see it personally. I want to get inside that city where God Himself shall be the light of the city. I'm looking forward to that. Listen, guys, share this video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Have even a greater weekend. Let's rejoice. Let's rejoice. Let's be a witness. Let's lead somebody to Jesus Christ. All righty. Thanks for watching. See you Monday. We may go live tonight. I'm pretty sure, almost 100% sure, we'll go live tonight at home, sing some songs for you. So I'm not really sure exactly what time we'll go. I'll give you plenty of notice before we go. So thanks for watching. Share this video. Love you. God bless you.